Welcome to Torah Talk with Lou White and Mark Davidson. A Torah Institute podcast. Water. Why do we need to go there? Why did Yahuwah command us to be immersed for our deliverance? Do we just go down dry and come up wet and believe that some supernatural voodoo took place? Some would say, yes. Is there something magical going on in the water that changes us? Or is it about our heart? About our commitment? About our pledge that we make towards our Creator? Why does Yahuwah require us to be immersed in water? Let's go back to Torah and hear our Creator Yahuwah's mind. Let's find out what we're really entering into when we go through the water immersed into Yahusha. Good morning, Mr. White. Good morning. It's a good afternoon here. But <laughs> it is indeed. Yes. How are you, brother? I'm fine. I've got my green screen up. What's behind us? What's behind us? We, we're underwater today. Ooh. Yes. We're Makes sense. Because yes. we're going to be talking about a subject that involves water. Mm. Who has started creation with water. And I think Kepha, Peter, talked about that. And yes. then immersion now is a figure of uh, things like that. Like he talks about uh, in the days of Noah, you know, and going back into the the, deliver, the deliverance of uh, eight beings in the through water, you know. Mm. Yeah, that was very interesting. That wasn't it? How Noah was saved through the water, and his belief, despite what everybody was putting on him, uh, he still stuck to his guns and. And built an ark, and it saved him. Or well, Yahuwah saved him. Delivered. Delivered. Yeah, not allowed to say saved. Yeah, delivered. Right. Well, yeah. that's a good. That's a good, better, probably. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, anyway, the thing that we probably want to remember most of all is that uh, those of you that watch this information want it's your heart's desire to reunite or you know be restored to Yahuwah. And you don't do it through meeting with other uh, denominations or joining organizations. You do this on a personal level, you know. Mm -hmm. And that, and nothing is more personal than being completely enveloped in water, mm -hmm. and then coming back up and being a new creature, you know, somebody that uh, leaves the, the, their old being behind, you know. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a figure, you know, but it's yeah. literally a, an act of obedience, and that's the point where. You know, Yahuwah has promised that there would be a change in you. But we have lots of examples to look at in Scripture. But, uh, you know, one of the things that... Uh, did you want to mention the, 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 the two uh, lovely women that we're talking to? Yes, we're, uh, we're addressing this whole meeting between Lou and I today. We're, we're, we're appealing to two lovely ladies up in far north Queensland, Australia. And uh, the pool ladies. We've got Antonia, the original pool lady. Antonia and uh, her friend Beryl and they are uh, they go swimming every day down at the local pool and they've bought a copy of Fossilized Customs and they're watching it and they're uh, reading it I should say and they're uh, watching the DVDs we make and they're they're deciding whether immersion is the right step for them and so today we want to explain to them what yeah, it is that is you're stepping into. <laughs> this is directly for you Yes, and all yes. those others and that. It's a wonderful thing. And there's no age limit to this. There's no race limits. You can be completely a foreigner to all this and still you're invited. You know, and, and what you're joining into is important to understand too because you're enjoining to your creator through the only means that he offered. And that started actually at Sinai. But people are told to stay away from that Sinai. That's Hagar. 
you know, <laughs> but we're going to find out that's not necessarily a clear idea. Mm. But, uh, mm. you know, what it is, is it's about his covenant. That's why I mentioned Sinai, because this is a rejoining to his covenant, you know, and that covenant is, is an everlasting covenant and it has an everlasting sign. And that sign, people are told to stay away from that too. You know, and everlasting covenants typically have signs that also are everlasting. And they're told, to, oh, don't listen to that. But anyway, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to explain any Hebrew words that we may use. We're going to have to explain. But uh, the, the idea. The Sabbath. The yeah. yeah. The sign is the Sabbath. Yeah. It's actually a covenant sign, just like the rainbow was a covenant sign. Yeah. And circumcision yeah. was a covenant sign for the land, you know. Yeah. And this is a sign forever for all people. Yeah. And it goes back to creation week. So, you know, we can't say, well, there's not seven days anymore. Yeah, there are. Yeah. And those seven days, one of those days, Yahuwah blessed. So we have to remember he didn't like the blessing's not gone. So the Sabbath is still the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Now, the dragon tried to change it. And most of the world is still thinking that the first day of the week is actually the Sabbath now. But that day was never blessed. The other one was, and it stays blessed. But anyway, uh, there's only one body. There's only one body. There's not many bodies. There's not the Jews and the Christians. And that's replacement theology, you know. In fact, I was going to show you a magic trick real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Magic. <gasps> yes. Isn't that creepy? No, this is not uh, of Yahuwah. Magic is not good. I feel like I'm at the circus. Magic. Yes. <laughs> you see, I, I mentioned that there's only one body. And the replacement theology is a magic trick that's mm. performed. And it's done to deceive people, you know. And there, there's us, as we're told. And then there's them. And then, you know, as time passes, there was them being the Israelites, and then in dispensational or replacement theology, they tell you that they're not any longer his people. That was a doctrine that just came out from the Roman Catholic uh, circus just a while back, that, that, that Israel is no longer Yahuwah's people, but the Catholics are. Well, that's the us that we're talking about here, you know. But the one body involves them and the Gentiles, who are usually us, must engraft into the olive tree, and that way, in the future, there'll still be one body, and it'll be those that obey his covenant. You see, his covenant. Now, another magic trick is called dispensationalism. I'm sorry about that word, but they do this. They call these words by fancy terms. The dispensation trick involves, over time, that is no longer pertinent, and what we do now is in the new dispensation. You know, the Sunday and the bunny rabbit thing, the, the birth and the Christmas thing. But uh, what really is going is to happen is this is going to be in the future. You know, so w the future is going to become the past. Because I'll tell you a specific instance is in, in the prophet Isaiah, or Yeshiyahu, chapter 66, the future in the millennium, he's talking about the millennium, after Yahushua comes back, that, that there's going to be some, some things done then from new moon and to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath in that span of time, from week to week and moon to moon, the entire time period, all flesh is going to bow down and worship before Yahuwah. But it says from new moon to new moon, meaning the entire time. And Sabbath to Sabbath. Now, what's Sabbath? You know, is he talking about Sunday? No, but he's talking about the future. So this uh, this dispensationalism is is all a magic trick. I just want you to know that a dispensation because, is two thousand years, isn't it? Is that what a dispensation well, is? Dispensation is is generally referred to by the theologians and the seminaries as being uh, a, a period of time when things have changed and there's a, a different dispensation 
which usually includes a different people too, you know. But actually, Israel has always had the same commission to go and teach the nations and be priests to the nations. Mm. So that's what we're we're part of a restoration, you know, mm. because we have to identify ourselves probably a little bit. Because let me do this, because a lot of people are very afraid of new things, and we're restoring the name too of who we are. We're the Nazarene. That's the, in Acts 24, verse 5, and we're referred to in chapter 28, too, as a sect. We are a sect. It's a group. It's not a, it's called a heresis, or heresis, where you get the word heretic from. <laughs> but anyway. That's us. Awesome. Because we are a sect, and we're identified in Scripture as a sect. And what we do is we guard, because that's what the word Nazir means, Nazirim, that's plural, that means more than one. And we're the sect of the Nazarene that Paul was accused of being a ringleader of the sect at, by Tertullus. Anyway, before Felix. Anyway, the thing of it is, these Nazarene, that's who we are. We're being raised up by the spirit of Yahushua in the last days. And we guard the, his word and his name. And his word is the Torah. Now, that's the instructions. And it certainly would include the center of his instructions, the covenant, which is the Ten Commandments, which was given at Sinai, you know, and the name of Yahuwah. See, we don't replace his name and we don't, we call on his name. In fact, it's specifically done when we're immersed. We have to call on his name for our, for the forgiveness of our sins. Now, in, in Psalm 138, verse 2, it says, I bow myself toward your set apart heckle which is the word temple or shrine, the building where his name is placed, and give thanks to your name for your kindness and for your truth. For you have made great your word, your name, above all. Yeah, see? I'll hold that real still. Now, the... Uh, <laughs> Now, we, we mentioned calling on his name. Well, we, we're going to mention that in Acts chapter 2 also. But there's one thing that is mentioned in Romans nine or Romans 10 that's very interesting. Let me show you that. It says that if you confess with your mouth the master Yahushua and believe in your heart that Elohim has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You know, for the heart, for from with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. Now, you know, we could go on and read the rest of that, but I just want you to know that that's uh, very important because if you're calling on another name, like uh, if Elijah or Eli Eliyahu had been standing there in front of all these pagan priests of the other, you know, B A A L and A S H E R A H, if he'd not called upon the name of Yahuwah, then nothing would have happened, you know. In Acts 2.38, we mentioned earlier, it says, And Kepha said to them, Repent, and let each one of you be immersed in the name of Yahushua Messiah for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the set-apart spirit. In the next verse, For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off. And many, as many as Yahuwah our Elohim shall call. And then a little bit later in the same chapter, it says, Then those indeed who gladly received his word were immersed. And on that day, about 3,000 beings were added to them. 3,000 beings. Now those 3,000 beings reflect back to, the, to Sinai. There were 3,000 beings added. And at Sinai, there were 3,000 beings taken away. And it's got to be more than a coincidence. Anyway, what were they doing in Acts chapter 2 there? Well, those weren't uh, Pentecostals or uh, Catholics. They were the assembled multitudes of all the tribes of Israel, from areas of Parthia, the Parthians and the Greeks, and people from all over the region. You know, in fact, the world. And in Acts, 2, in Acts 2, they were observing a festival of weeks, which was the wedding anniversary of Sinai. Because, you see, the Sinai 
the Sinai, uh, giving of the Ten Commandments to the tribes of Israel, was a marriage. And, it, and in chapter 7 of Acts, Stephanos, or Steph, Stephen, is saying that these were living words that were given to Israel. And the husband, or bridegroom, is Yahuwah himself. Yahushua is often called the bridegroom because they're the same being. You know, people don't even know that much. They think that there's two or three of them. But <laughs> he's one husband to Israel. And uh, that's what we're talking about here. They were doing it in Acts chapter 2, and when they say that it's a birthday... It's not. It's an anniversary of a wedding. A betrothal was taking place at Sinai, and they were given the Torah, which is the covenant. Uh, it's a covenant of love, loving kindness, or hasid. And they were told to teach their children this diligently, and their grandchildren, and to walk in it always. Now, the, the, the problem was they didn't, but, uh, you know, it's going to be received, though. See, when it was given at Sinai, it was just given. It wasn't received, but it was given in Acts chapter 2. It was received. Because remember, we, we read this. Then those indeed who gladly received his word, it was written on their hearts. That's why they were cut to the heart. They received the words, you see. And that's the big change that happened. That's the difference between what was at Sinai written in stone and now it's written in hearts and, the, and now the Torah, the covenant, the ten words, is up walking around on the earth alive and he's you know living in, the, in us. That's because he's given us his spirit. Now when you do this you must be immersed calling on his name for the forgiveness of your sins. We're going to go through that. You know, Aren't these uh, flash? That's amazing. Yeah. So the, the Torah was first given at Sinai, but it wasn't received until Acts chapter 2 on the day of Shavuot, Pentecost. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Now, the immersion that we're doing is a Hebrew word, Tevila, and we're, they were immersed into Moshe when they went out of Mitzrayim, you see. When they came out of Mitzrayim, or Egypt, they were about 600,000 men on foot, not including the women and the little ones. And when they went in, uh, went into the water, through the water, there were a uh, mixed multitude, you know. The mixed multitude implies that there were other enslaved peoples that came out with them, but they were all immersed into as one nation, okay. Now that's what happens too with us in our immersion. When we're immersed into Yahusha, we might be of any nationality background, but most likely we're all basically carrying the seed of Abraham anyway, but, you know, ever so slightly. But uh, in Genesis 1, two, verse 2, in the second part, and the spirit of Elohim was moving on the face of the waters, and to be immersed, you know he's, he's still hovering on the face of the waters, you know, but uh, that's interesting because that's the beginning of creation, and it reflects or figures the kind of thing that's happening when we go into the water. There's something brand new happening. And Yahuwah probably thinks all the way back to when he was created. And he's making a new creation when you go in the water. You're not a Gentile any longer. You're an Israelite. That's the denomination that's going to be in the future. When you go into the world to come, there's not going to be three or four denominations. You're only going to have one, and that's Yisrael. You know, and there's not some uh, new dispensation of Yisrael. It's the same people. It's the people in a covenant relationship. You know. Now, what was going on in Acts chapter two? We're going to re we're going to remember this. They were, it was a wedding anniversary of the time they were at Sinai, and they were betrothed, and they promised to obey their husband. All that you say, we will do and obey. Now, the word Shabuoth, that the Christians call Pentecost, which is Greek for count 50. Penta means 50. Cost. You're counting it to 50. Well, 50 days from the time they left Mitzrayim, they were at Sinai. And that was called Shabuoth. And it's based on the word Sheba for seven. And it was exactly 49 days plus one 
and, and that's why Shabua is is one week, and there were seven weeks, so they call it Shavuot. That's a plural ending, and it, so they call it weeks, the festival of weeks. That's why you see it in your translation that way when you read Acts chapter two, the festival of weeks. This is not a Christian thing. People think you know, it's a Christian thing. It's not. This is one of the seven annual Sabbaths that Yisrael has been keeping all along. Anyway, it's the time they were given the Torah, the covenant. That's why immersion is about the covenant. You're covenanting personally. You don't have to wait for a particular day to come, though. You can do it now, anytime, in the middle of the night, in an ocean, in a bathtub, wherever you are. It doesn't take two people. It takes you and your maker. You're covenanting with him, not anyone else. And that's a little, you know, interesting thing to know. Now, we covered Acts chapter 2, and we covered who, we're, who our husband is. And uh, what, what, another thing I want to bring up that's very important. People say, well, we don't have to obey those laws, or it was nailed to the crooks, uh, or all that sort of thing. It was our crimes that were nailed to the crooks. <laughs> One Torah, one instruction, or law, or rule, at Numbers 15, you're going to find out that in verse 15 and 16, there's one law or one Torah given for the assembly. That's the word kahal, not the C-H-U-R-C-A-H or the circus. And the stranger, the, the, the ger or gar. That's where you get the gar, goyim. Well, the stranger is the foreigner. And when they, when they are enjoined to the, to the kahal, you know, the assembly of Yisrael, then there's to be one one Torah, you know, for all all time, you know, and these are living words. That's what the Torah is. They're living words. Just look at Acts seven thirty eight, and they were ordained by messengers. You know, they're not going to be going away. These these are the these are the covenant of love. If you read the commandments, you see that they're the the instructions as to how to love Yahuwah and how to love your neighbor. Now, that's very important. But how are you going to call on the one that you, in whom you've not heard? You have to read Romans 10, verses 13 through 15. You need to read that, you know, because you're, you're being told to call on all these different things, different names and different countries. and It's actually only one name given under heaven among men by which we must be delivered, Acts 4.12. Hold that count now, up again. What oh, uh, Romans 10, 13 yeah. through 15. How shall they hear without one proclaiming? We're going to proclaim. We're going to, that's what we're doing here. We're telling you that the name is not J-E-S-U-S. -S. That's less than 500 years old. He never heard those words on his lips, neither did any of his disciples, his, his students. Mm. Now, is it important, this covenant? Yeah, it is. Look, look at this. Proverbs 28, verse 9. He who turns his ear, turns away his ear, from hearing the Torah, and hearing means to hear and obey, even his prayer is an abomination. You see? Wow. There's a trick. Yeah. So you've got to listen to this Torah. If you don't receive the Torah, I mean, it was given at Sinai, but if you will not receive it, then you're not going to be immersed. Or if you've been tricked, you don't have to obey the Torah. Get immersed in the name of J-E-S-U-S. -S. See, there's a thief out there trying to steal you who is identity. He wants you, it's very much like his, his, his plan, but it's different, you see. And that's why we're very, very concerned that you get this thing right so that you can understand and obey, you know. Because if you're obeying, you, you're the, uh, what is that, that text that says, uh, do you not know that you're the servant of the one whom you obey? Whether of sin, which is unto righteousness, or disobedience, which is going you know, to lead to death. I, I haven't got that exactly memorized, and I'm sorry. But I think it's Ephesians. But uh, Mark can probably put that on the screen. <laughs> anyway, you have to become the servant of the one you know that is correct. You know. How you going with all this, ladies? <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah. got a, he's got a funny accent, hasn't he? <laughs> yes. 
Says, Do I pronounce words a funny way? <laughs> uh, Beryl said, I can't understand what he says. He's got a funny accent. <laughs> Is that right? Okay. Indeed, <laughs> she got used to it. Oh, she's watched some of the videos then. Yeah. Yeah, they love them. PowerPoint. Let me see. I'm going to try to get this uh, article up. The Immersion article has a lot of good information in it. And there it is. Let's get that open. Brothers and sisters, Brother Lou is reading from this article called Immersion that you wrote a few years ago. And those of you who are getting a DVD will see this article inside the DVD cover. So if you want to follow along, you can you can follow along. So it's a wonderful step you're about to take, yes. ladies. Immersion. This is for you. You're going to become new creations. New creations. The immersion is actually your personal pledge of a good conscience toward Yahuwah. And uh, the covenant is what it's about. Now, covenant in Hebrew means brief, and it means to cut something, because they would cut animals in half and walk between them. Now, that's what it means. And Gentiles engraft into the commonwealth of Israel by joining to Yahuwah in the covenant. That's the restoration. And the restoration of all things must occur until uh, before Yahuwah will return. And thereby we partake of the promises given to Yisrael's husband, Yahuwah. By calling on the name Yahusha, that means Yah is our deliverer. We're proclaiming that Yah is our deliverance. And, and we're declaring that we trust in him as well, and we show him our obedience, as Israel did at Sinai. Now, Yahuwah married, or betrothed, uh, Israel at Sinai, they became his wife, all the tribes, and it wasn't just for those present but to, that, were, that were there that day, but for those who were yet to be born, you know. And it's a marriage. And they became his bride. If you look at Romans 11, this is apparent. Shavuot is a wedding anniversary. That's what Pentecost is. And it remembers the giving of the Torah, you know. And um, all who call on the name of Yahuwah will be delivered. Now, if you call on the name of uh, Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse, it's not going to help. Now, there's only one denomination, and that's, that's Yisrael, in the kingdom now and in the kingdom in the future. And it's Yahusha who cuts and circumcises our hearts with a love for his covenant. And this is the receiving of the love for the truth, which is his word. And that is his covenant. His word is truth. And his word refers to his covenant. And it's, it's wonderful. It's a covenant of loving kindness. He is the mediator of the renewed covenant, and he is seeking and finding his lost sheep now. And the lost tribes of Israel among the nations, because he scattered them. See, and we're scattered all over. As his ambassadors, we are the hunters searching for his sheep. There were 70 people that entered Egypt, and they grew into a multitude. And when they were delivered from bondage by Yahuwah, there were others of mixed multitude among them. And they came out with them, and they were all brought together through the water under that as one nation. And the everlasting uh, covenant was given to these people at Sinai. And they became Yahuwah's bride. Now, Deuteronomy 29, starting at verse 10, it says, All of you are standing today before Yahuwah, your Elohim, your leaders, your tribes, your elders, and your officers, all the men of Israel, and your little ones, your wives, and, all, and the sojourner who is in the midst of your camp, from the one who cuts your wood and the one who draws your water, so that you should enter the covenant in, and with Yahuwah, your Elohim, and into his oath, which Yahuwah, your Elohim, makes with you today in order to establish you today as a people for himself, and he himself be your Elohim, as he has spoken to you, and as he has sworn to your fathers, to Abraham, to Yishak, and to you. Now, and not with you alone am I making this covenant and this oath, but with him who stands here with us today before you who are Elohim, as well as with him who is not here with us today. That's very interesting. Now, here's the rest of it. 
Torah is a precious gift. It's not something you have to say, well, we don't have to have that. All we have to do is believe that he died for our sins and he's resurrected and we're fine. Well, if you walk lawlessly, you're going to find out something different. Now, being lawless means to be without his Torah, his instructions, and to ignore them. Because, remember, we told you this, in Proverbs 28, 9, that he does not change. Malachi chapter 3 says, he does not change. See, he, 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 he who turns his ear away from hearing the Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. That's, that explains why Yahushua said what he said when he said, I never knew you. Away from me, you, without the Torah, who walk in lawlessness. Anyway, the wife received the gift at, Tor uh, I mean, at, at Acts chapter 2 for the first time. And that was the wedding anniversary that commemorated the giving of the Torah at Sinai. It was 50 days after the week of Passover, or uh, you know, unleavened bread. Now, our heart is our lamp, you know, and we have to have light in our lamp. The light is the word of Yahuwah, the Torah. And we receive the precious oil for our lamp of Torah when Yahushua comes into us to pierce our innermost being with a love for his covenant. We receive a love for the truth. And the truth will set us free from sin. We can feel it when he cuts our hearts as though, as those did that heard Kepha's words at Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 37. And having heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Kepha and to the rest of the emissaries, Men, brothers, what shall we do? And Kepha said to them, Repent, and let each one of you be immersed into the name of Yahushua Messiah for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the set-apart spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as Yahuwah, our Elohim, shall call. Isn't that amazing? Wow. That's most of the first page. So this uh, Torah is a light. That's what the menorah represents. See, the seven-branch lampstand represents the Torah. You want to, I can read these Ten Commandments to you first. These are the Ten Commandments that we've been referring to. Number one is, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Have no other before my face. Number two, you do not bow to images. Number three, you do not cast the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim, to ruin. Number four, remember Shabbat to keep its Kodesh, that means set apart. Now, Sabbath is a sign of the everlasting covenant, and it was changed, but that was by Constantine. It was referred to, that, that change was referred to in Daniel 7, verse 25. Now, the covenant is an everlasting covenant given it, uh, in, it referred to as a sign forever. At Exodus 31, verse 13, and Ezekiel 20, verse 16 through 20. Anyway, he blessed that day. Now, number five, you respect your father and your mother. Number six, you do not murder. Number, number seven, you do not break wedlock. Number eight, you do not steal. Number nine, you do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Number 10, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor do you covet your neighbor's house, his, his servants, his ox, his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Now, it says in Revelation 22, blessed are those doing his commands, so that the authority shall be theirs unto the tree of life, and to enter through the gates into the city, now, let's say you just take one of those out of there and you say, well, I don't like the Sabbath. I'm going to keep Sunday because it's, it's the day that everybody keeps and they can't all be wrong. Well, what if you do that? You know, is that verse in, in Revelation going to apply to you? Because Israel, the, the, new, Jeru the new, new Jerusalem, is only going to have 12 gates and they're named after the 12 tribes of Israel. You know, there's not a, a gate there for your denomination, you know. Mm, that's brilliant. I like that. There's no well, no Christian gate or <laughs> no. There's for those of you who have just tuned tuned in, brothers and sisters. We're going through immersion today, and uh, our brother Lou is addressing two lovely ladies in far north Queensland, Antonia and Beryl, who are uh, contemplating taking the step of immersion. 
and uh, we're going through Lou White's article on immersion. Just to just because often the foundational steps can be a bit laborious, and uh, here's another another rant on what we're supposed to do. We, we want to make this personal today, and and uh, show you just how simple and easy entering in the covenant is, and what what we're going to become, and what you're really entering into when you step into the waters and come out a new creation. Page three. Oh, I think uh, I think I may have skipped some of it. And I'm not sure, but let's go. Let's start on page two because I think I may have skipped this. The our immersion is a pledge, and the translation sometimes you'll see Peter being quoted, and it's an answer. But the word answer is actually more accurately translated a pledge, which is a pledge of saying we will obey your commandments. We will. We want to. Immersion is an outward sign of a good conscience towards Yahuwah, and our dipping represents our circumcision. Carefully notice Colossians 2, verse 11 and 12. In him, you were also circumcised in the putting off of the sinful nature. In other words, you don't want to sin anymore. You're done. You're, you're finished with all that. And it's not with the circumcision, circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Mashiach, as Messiah, having been buried with him in immersion, and raised with him through your faith in the power of Yahuwah, who raised him from the dead. Now, if we don't comprehend that at the time we were immersed, or we call on some other name that some seminary student gave us, then we may have to have a do-over, because an infant can't possibly understand what they're doing. They can't make a commitment or a pledge. Immersion is an act of your personal will. You covenant personally, with Yahushua, and he's who created you. And it is in your heart, that's the seat of your will, that he circumcises with a love for his covenant, his Torah. Our immersion is the moment that we personally enter into the renewed covenant with Yahushua, when he writes the Torah on his Torah on our hearts. And this is explained at Jeremiah, or Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 33. That's the renewed covenant. And it's quoted at Hebrews chapters 8 and 10. Its operation is explained in Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8. And we become citizens of the commonwealth of Israel. It's not a state. It's not a government that men put together. We're not talking about the nation of Israel that's in the land right now. They're, they're regathered by the United Nations. We're regathering to his covenant wherever we might be. He scattered us. He will regather us. The United Nations won't. According to Revelation 12 and Revelation 14, we are sealed in his name and enjoined to you as a member of the sect of the Nazarene. Now that's mentioned it, it, it we're identified at, at Acts 24 verse 5 and in Revelation 12 and 14 we're called first fruits now we're those who do two things we obey the Torah that's the covenant and we hold to the testimony of Yahushua now if you just look at those two things it's mentioned right there in Revelations chapter 12 and chapter 14 they do two things they're obeying the commandments and they're holding to a testimony of Yahushua these are the first fruits. Now, the Christians hold to the testimony of Yahushua. They believe in Yahushua, but they don't obey the commandments. They're told, no, you, don't, you can't obey those. But didn't you, Scripture just say he wrote them on our hearts? Yeah, you see. And the, the, the Yahudim right now, the unbelieving Yahudim, that is, they keep the commandments but they don't hold to the testimony of Yahushua, so they're not the first fruits. Now, our pledge at immersion is a choice between life and death. That's what it is. That's why this is very, very important. It's, it's a life and death struggle. Now, at first, first John 5, it says in, chapter, in verse, 13, you know, verse 11 through 13, and this is the witness that Elohim has given us everlasting life, and this life is in his Son. He who possesses the Son possesses life, and he who does not possess the Son of Elohim does not possess life. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of Elohim, so that you know that you possess everlasting life, 
and so that you believe in the name of the Son of Elohim. Notice that it is Yahushua that circumcises our hearts. Now in Colossians 2, we mentioned this before, in him you were circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands in the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Messiah, having been buried with him in immersion in which you were also raised with him through the belief in the working of Elohim, who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. So your sins are not forgiven until you're immersed. This act of immersion is clearly what represents our circumcision as the outward sign or act of our faith. And now indicating the circumcision of Messiah. Men who boast in one another's flesh, saying, yes, I circumcised him. Well, if you boast, or bo if men boast in one another's flesh, whether or not they're circumcised, that's not, a, that's not it. You see, they've missed the whole spiritual point. If we've received Yahushua's spirit, we are his. He, he, he belongs to us, too. But, you know, we're his inheritance and he's ours, just like a husband and wife. Now, he circumcised our hearts with a love for the truth, which is a love for his Torah. And if you've been circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, then you're done. You can't improve on that. If you have uh, actually done that, nothing that you can do can improve on what, Yehu what Yehusha has done. Wow. Now... Yeah, when we love him enough to obey him and get immersed, he will write his Torah on our hearts. Uh, you have to understand it's a love of Torah because you have to read it. You know, and those who will not obey him will not receive his spirit. Acts 5.32 is very clear about that. He who turns his ear away from hearing the Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. Proverbs 28.9. Now, our lamp needs oil. The you, kind of oil that, yes. Sorry, you um, you keep bringing up this word circumcision. What um, we're talking about immersion into water, and yeah. uh, you're talking about circumcision. For those of us who have no scriptural knowledge or haven't read it, why is um, what's our willies got to do with, <laughs> got to do with the covenant? Why we're we talking well, about immersion and, you know, what uh, what's that about? Well, if, if, if the Christians will read Galatians, they'll see that this word law is used in the translations. And Galatians is all about this topic, and it deals with circumcision. And so does Acts chapter 15. I advise everyone to read Acts chapter 15, which discusses the fleshly circumcision. And then they'll say, wait a minute, it doesn't matter? The flesh doesn't matter at all. But what happens in Galatians is they and it's misunderstood mostly. They think that he's talking about the Ten Commandments. And that's what the, the pastors have been teaching the Christians, is that Galatians is about the law, and you don't have to obey it. He's talking about the law of circumcision, because immersion has replaced that as a much higher level, at a much higher level, because it's, it's in the heart. And that's why circumcision is related directly to this covenant. Because, see, we were talking about uh, the immersion being uh, uh, reflecting the giving of the Torah at Sinai, and we were there, and our, our forefathers were there at Sinai, but today, and they were giving, he was, he was giving them the Torah. But today, we receive the Torah when we're immersed. And that is the same act. It's as if you're standing at Sinai, hearing the words of Sinai, and you're going, I love this. And, and they didn't say they loved it. They just said, we will hear and obey. And that's what they, they responded with mm -hmm. as the wife. Mm -hmm. But uh, circumcision is a very complicated subject if you uh, misunderstand it. Because mm -hmm. it, it was given as a, as a figure before. And it was about the covenant. you know. And it's an everlasting covenant. We are to circumcise our male children if, 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 on the eighth day from their birth. Because we're Israelites, and when we're born into Israel, but when if we're past that now, they can be immersed, and that's that's fine as long as they uh, understand that they have to be immersed, which is now the pledge of a good conscience towards Yahuwah. Uh, so, it's a subject that's contentious. 
So to enter the covenant uh, when it f was first given, you had to one of the signs and prerequisites to, was to be circumcised. So what he's saying now is, yep. uh, your circumcision is now done in your heart. Is that so? Right. It's, it's a personal. You don't have to be physically circumcised. It's done in your heart. Right. Right. I get it. Yeah, the living words are poured into our hearts by Yahushua. Now, the Torah is the word of instruction, and it's oil. It is his spirit. It's his mind. That's why oil and spirit are often understood to be the same thing, because it is him. It's Yahushua's spirit, and he is the living word. And though in the covenant is living words. We read Stephen's words at Acts chapter 7. The covenant, the living words were, were given to us, you know, to Israel. And uh, it's the mind of Yahuwah, which is his will for us. It's his will. What is Yahuwah's will? Well, he's, he's given it to us. Now, uh, it's often, the mind of the Spirit is often just referred to as the Spirit. The Torah is inseparable from the Spirit of Yahushua. And it's living and active. Read Hebrews chapter 4. Our heart is our lamp. Our lamp. It's our mind. It's just the same thing. And the spiritual component that that represents within us. See, we have a body and we have a spirit. And that spirit is what has to be filled with his life. Otherwise, it's dead too. Uh, now, uh, our heart is what needs the living words, the oil. That's his life. And it's poured into them like lamp oil or new wine in, in new wineskins. He makes us a new wineskin. Stephen called the Torah the living words given at Sinai. Most reject them because they are guided by false shepherds. They're ravenous wolves masquerading as messengers of light. Well, if you're, if you're not using the light, what light are you using? It must be darkness. Anyway, he says this. Watch this. This is amazing. And Isaiah, or Yeshayahu, 51, it says, Listen to me, you who know righteousness, a people in whose heart is my Torah. Do not fear the reproach of men, nor be afraid of their revilings. So they're going to revile us, but, you know, that's too bad. He's our rear guard, which he mentions in Isaiah 52. Anyway, 1 Peter says, in chapter 3, starting at verse 15, But set apart Yahuwah Elohim in your hearts, and always be ready to give an answer to anyone, asking you a reason concerning the expectation that is in you, with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, so that when they speak against you as doers, as doers of evil, those who falsely accuse your good behavior in Messiah shall be ashamed. For it is better if it is the desire of Elohim to suffer for good than for doing evil. Because even Messiah once suffered for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to Elohim, having been put to death, indeed, in flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, who were disobedient at one time when the patience of Elohim waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight beings, were, were delivered or saved through water, which figures, or is an example of, something that now saves us, immersion, not putting away the filth of the flesh, but the pledge of a good conscience toward Elohim through the resurrection of Yahushua Messiah, who, having gone into heaven, is at the right hand of Elohim, messengers and authorities and powers having been subjected to him. Now, that's the writings of uh, our bro brother Kepha. Now, here's a question. This is a very important question. Can we perform our own pledge without anyone else present? I advise everyone to have an elder teach them and, if possible, um, be with another believer for, as a witness for their sake. It isn't for your sake, but for their sake, another person who has not been immersed, 
a family member or something, that would be really highly recommended to see you take just a minute. It only takes a minute for you to call on the name of Yahusha for salvation and to offer him, uh, offer him yourself, your whole being, for his use. Now, here's the answer to the question. Can we pledge without anyone present? Yes, we can. Because all that matters is what Yahusha hears coming out of our mouth. Nicolaitans, those are people who lord over the people, don't like this. So most people are baptized into a denomination. And the only one that utters a word is the false shepherd, dipping the person into the water. We can use any body of water. We can use an ocean, a stream, a lake, a bathtub, or a pool. We can use anything. An elder is not required to be present. I know that you've got Philip, and you've got the Ethiopian eunuch, who went to, back to you know, his, his African home, and Philip was somehow brought there you know, by some means that we don't even know, transporting. And he went down into the water with the man. And that is a good thing to do if you want to do that. And, but that's, there's not a rule about that. The water is required for the person being immersed in. Now, there are witnesses because there are heavenly witnesses. And Yahushua is the one you're covenanting with. And if he can't hear you, then, uh, you know, if you're calling on another name, too, that's not going to be a good thing. But uh, because the people that were at, at Sinai, uh, and it's not at Sinai, but the people that were uh, calling on B-A-A-L, the false priests in the days of Elijah on Mount Carmel, they were calling on B-A-A-L. They might as well have been calling on J-E-S-U-S because that's not his name. You know, he's not got three to four names. He's only got one name. His name has always been Yahushua or Yahushua. Okay. Now, there are witnesses and there's a, an abundance of rejoicing. Malachim, or messengers. Our immersion represents our death of our old self and its nature. See, our nature is changed, and it's not like we used to be. We don't think about things in the same way. We see things from his perspective. So we can't clean up ourselves. We can't prepare for our immersion, except that we reveal that we have been sinners, and we look at the commandments, and we say, that's it. I, I'm lost. I, I need you. And then we give ourselves to him. Just as he laid his life down, we lay ours down. Now, um, our, our immersion represents the death of our old self. We can't clean up, but we rather acknowledge our filth to the only one that can help us. And we accept the cleansing of his perfect blood to cover our sins against his covenant. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, but without belief, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to Elohim has to believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. First, we must believe that he exists, and that sin is any transgression against his Torah. Because if you read 1 John 3, verse 4, you'll see that sin is the breaking of the commandments. Now, confessing that we have transgressed against him, we turn back with all our heart and we pledge to obey him. That means to stop sinning. We now are ready to enter his covenant, which is a relationship, not a religion. And we pronounce our belief in his atonement for our sins through his shed blood, which is the perfect offering for sins. And we call upon his name for deliverance. Excellent. So can you so throwing water at uh, somebody is not classified as immersion, is it? I was a Catholic when I was born. Okay, it doesn't mean that we stay that way, but uh, you know, you 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 learn the truth. And as an infant, what they do is they sprinkle this uh, oil or water. They call it holy water of, of all things, as if uh, people can uh, do something to change water. But anyway, they do. They think that they do. Yeah. So immersion or baptismo or whatever the word is, it actually means fully under the water, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, you go under the water. 
Yeah. And uh, it, it's uh, some people that are in prisons, they can't get all the way underwater. So they just do it in a shower. And of course, Yahuwah's uh, pledge is about your heart. The pledge of a good conscience is, j it'll take a, a prisoner just a few seconds to pronounce a belief. And if you're unable to get in there, if you like, if, for example, a person's bedridden or something, um, they can they can be immersed by someone probably, but even if they can't uh, fully immerse, uh, Yahusha doesn't look at the, the the details that much. But he's looking at the will of the person and sees their heart, and he circumcises our hearts. Now, when we accept his loving gift of this covenant, and that is of him circumcising our heart, which is our lamp, giving our life to our lamp, and, a love, and receiving a love for his Torah and his, tr his truth. And we promise to obey him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Then we become his bride, and he is our husband, you know. And we accept his love and give him our love. And this is love. This is what it says in 2 John 1, verse 6. This is love, that we walk according to his commands. This is the command that, at, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. So who is this man? Is he a Christian? He's a Nazarene. Uh, you're not sorry. Now, John, or Yehuchanan, is Eleazar, uh, but he's the same one that wrote Revelation, you know. But he's the guy, he's talking about something that we heard from the beginning in his day would have been the covenant. You know, it wouldn't have been some uh, dispensational uh, Christian rules. Th this is something that he said we should be walking in. Now, Acts 4.12 says, There's no deliverance in anyone else, for there is no other name under the heaven given among men by which we need to be delivered or saved. The name is a singular name, and it's Yahusha, meaning Yah is our deliverer. If you read Acts chapter 2, Kepha is saying, repent and let each one of you be immersed into the name of Yahusha, Hamashiach, or the name. It's not names. It's not, you know, the, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Ruach HaKadosh, or the Holy Spirit, as they call it, is one name, you know. And he, he says, call on the Father in my name. So we call Yahusha our Father. You know, that's his name, because he's our deliverer. Yahuwah said, I am the only Savior, you know, and he's become our, our salvation. Now, Matthew 28 says this. This is very important. We read this every week, at, uh, every month at our seminars. And Yahushua came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Therefore, go and make taught ones of all the nations, immersing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the set-apart Spirit, teaching them to guard all that I have commanded you. And see, I am with you always, until the end of the age, the end of the, of the uh, cosmos. Amen. Now, read that carefully, because it says the name, immersing them in the name. In other words, they have to hear the name, and then be taught how to guard the rest of it. To, to obey it. Now, with each immersion, every time you are immersed, Yisrael increases in number. You may have been formerly Gentile, but after your immersion, you're no longer a Gentile. If you read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 13, that'll really help. Now, Exodus 12, 49 says, there's one Torah for the native born and for the stranger who sojourns among you. Once you're immersed, you're no longer strangers. You are not foreigners. You are adopted children. You're the same. And in fact, there's Yahuwah has said that you cannot even treat someone who is brought in as somebody as any different than a native born. You know. So that's very important. It couldn't even be any more simple than this. And it's not a religion. It's a relationship. So we have a head. That's Yahushua. And we are all one body, but many members, many parts. Wonderful.
So do you want to uh, show them the picture of someone going into the water and maybe showing them what needs to be basically covered in your own words, you know? It's, it's not so much about us reading the if we're taking somebody down to be immersed, if we get requested to assist somebody. It's not about us reading it out to them, is it? It's about them. And it's not about the exact words that they say, is it? It's, it's about yeah. them speaking to their creator. And just basically, that, that, w the word pierced stuck out to me in, in Acts 2 when, he's, when they said, and it said, uh, repent and be immersed in the name of Yusha, and it said they were pierced in the heart. What shall we do? If you're not pierced in the heart and sort of looking at your life and you've sort of, you realize you're just a hopeless sinner and, you know, you're stuffed. We're all, we've all stuffed our lives up and made mistakes and desperate sinners. If you're not, if you don't feel pierced, that's the whole conviction of sin and repentance and belief all in one. If you don't feel his word cut into your heart, then what are you really doing when you go in the water? You, you kind of, you're going into the water a desperate person you should be, aren't you? Like, I need you, Yahusha, please deliver me from myself, from Satan, from death, from deliver me. You're crying out for deliverance, aren't you? Yes. And not only that, but, uh, you know, I remember a point where I was very much a Christian and I went into the water and the pastor of the assembly was holding me as I dipped back and then it happened that I called upon the name of Yeshua. At that time I, I thought that that was his full name and it is. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 8 uses that form of his spelling. But uh, the pastor, as I was going under the water, had a shocked look on his face because he heard me say that. And it was almost like there was a uh, some shock that happened to his face because I was using the real name that he knew probably from seminary but I was calling on a name and he knew that there was a huge difference probably and I never felt right about that because I was there so I went and did it again in a creek you know um, it doesn't have to be living water in the sense that it's moving right then because living water is a is actually his words but the idea of going into living water in a mikvah, like a bathtub, is a mikvah, and it's living water because it has a, a port that goes in and a port that goes out. It has an escape. It, in other words, if you fill a bathtub or a swimming pool or whatever, and you, uh, it is living water because it's still at the moment, but it doesn't have to be moving. You know, uh, it's uh, it's good clean water. But even if it's muddy water, uh, if it was a, you know, you always want to stay upstream from the cattle herd that's crossing you know <laughs> don't don't do it there if I, yeah it's not it's not right but uh there's not really any details but we just go into any body of water uh small or large and uh, salt water lake water bathtub water it doesn't matter mm. uh, it can be any time of the day it doesn't you don't have to wait for a certain time of year it's it's just that we have to identify, though, with the fact that Sinai and Shabuoth, or what Christians have been calling Pentecost, this is these are very important figures. And, you know, what we have to know a little later, I mean, as you grow in the knowledge of the redemption of Israel, is that uh, there's more than one tribe, and they're scattered, and they're the prodigal sons and daughters, they don't even know who they are, but they wake up and they come to their senses and they return to their father's household. And this immersion is what that is. And that's very important to understand. And you'll learn more later that there's seven annual festivals that are Moedim or, or appointed times that Christian, Christianity has completely ignored. You know, they start. It starts out with Passover and unleavened bread, and you'll learn about first fruits, which is his resurrection, and then you have uh, the other, the other ones that come later in the year. And and they're they're according to the new moons, you know, the, on that level. And then of course your, the weekly Sabbath is another thing that, that you probably have heard about, and you rest on that day. You don't have to do anything. You could you could. Uh, 
sleep, you can read books, you can enjoy yourself, you can study His Word, which I highly recommend on that day. I spent all my Sabbaths immersed in His Word, you know, and uh, it, it, it just supercharges me for the rest of the week. Of course, uh, it's not pressure. It's, it's, it's life. You know, it's bread. It's true, real bread. You know. Superfoods. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you see somebody that you want to, if you look at Mark and I and you say, what is it with these guys? They love the commandments and they say so. Who talks like that? Well, would you, I'm challenging you, would you like to love the commandments? Would you? And would it please him? Would it please our creator if you loved his commandments? You know this is true, you see. And uh, it's not the, the commandments that save you. It's, it's the fact that he's giving you his life, and he gives you the love for the commandments, and that's the result of it. See, it's like he gives you his life because you return to him and you say, I want to obey you. And then he allows you to obey him because, you know, one of the things that's really interesting, I have a, a, a really interesting, um, well, I, I, I want to get the exact words, but uh, we have inherited lies. We know that. But uh, it's, it's a psalm. There's a psalm. Let me see if I can find it here. I've got it somewhere here. Psalm 25, verse 14, I think it is. All right, here it is. Psalm 25, verse 14. Now, this is really powerful for a Christian to read. The secret is with those who fear Yahuwah, and he makes his covenant known to them. Wow! That's what we're talking about. Because, see, the immersion is about his covenant. You see? Psalm 24, verse 14. Baruch. Yeah. Baruch Habah B'Shem Yahuwah. Now, that's Psalm 118. Baruch, blessed is the one who comes, Haba, Bashem, the name. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of Yahuwah. Wow. Um, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. See, the secret, the secret is with those who fear Yahuwah. And he makes his covenant known to them. Wow. Huh? That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in Yeshayahu, Isaiah, verse 42, verse 8. I am Yahuwah. That is my name. <laughs> you know. Amazing. It's not the Lord. See, that's B-A-A-L. If you look up B-A-A-L in any dictionary, it's going to tell you that it's defined as Lord. How can that be good? Hmm. Anyway. The dragon... The dragon is absolutely ropeably furious when he sees two brothers or brothers and sisters loving one another with his love, Yahushua's love. He's just furious, yeah. isn't he? We have, we're, we're all going to have some doctrinal misunderstandings, and yet we have to remember 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that even if you have all knowledge and you speak in all languages, uh, if you don't have love, then it's all pointless. It's for nothing, you know. Yeah. You um you mentioned before about you getting immersed in a in a, a creek, and you were, you were saying yesterday how you took your son Michael down with you, uh, and he was immersed too. What uh, does Torah have an age limit uh, as far as how young, um, or do you have a sort of a idea in your mind what how how young is too young? How what what age do you think is mature enough? Because your kids might say, "Oh, I love you, Husha. Can I get immersed, Daddy?" And you're you're like, "Oh, yeah. I don't think you really, you know, understand it." Or what do you think? Well, you know, if I gave you the best answer that I have in in my suspicions, it, I, I I always I appeal not to men's traditions, but there is something to be said about the age of twelve and the age of 13, but you see, you can't really go by that so much as a hard, fast rule, but, you know, Yahushua was going to a festival one time at the age of, I think it was 13, 
And he was detained while he was teaching the men, and he was debating and disputing with the, the elders in the in the Sanhedrin. And his parents went on back, assuming that he was with someone in the in the caravan, and. Uh, They'd gotten a good distance away, and they realized, hey, he's not here. Well, uh, it was that age that he was at when he was be able to be a, what they call bar mitzvah, which is a son of the commandments or the, the son of the instructions. And uh, 13 is a, probably a good age for a, a boy mm. in general. But then, you know, why mark it at that? Uh, you know, why, why do that? I would do it when the person is ready. And, uh, and then again, you, you know, we understand, too, that there are many fillings of the Spirit. The Spirit fills you and fills you and fills you. And sometimes when you grieve the Spirit, you lose the Spirit. You know, the Spirit withdraws from you when you're in sin. And that's not good. You feel it, you know. And so what we try to do is, in constant prayer, we stay in tune with Yahushua and let him use us always and speak through us. And, and he takes over our thoughts. He literally possesses you, just like a, a possession. And he, because we are his vessels. We are his vessels. You know, as, we, as someone would use a, a common vessel in your house. And that's what we seek to be. But there are many fillings of the Spirit. You know, he enables you. He might equip you to do something that you didn't, well, it's not you doing it anyway. He could do anything through you or any of his people. You know, he speaks, he can speak through a donkey. Uh, you don't have to be a special person. You know, I'm certainly not a special person. I'm just of average intelligence. But you see, when you've been equipped by the mind of Yahuwah, there's anything that he can use you for. You know, um, you just have to humble yourself and say, well, I'm giving myself to you. Use me in any way. Here I am. And uh, that's what the prophet Yeshayahu said. You know, you know, when Yahuwah said, who will go for us? And he's speaking as a king. He uses that royal plural. Who shall go for us? You know, like a king would talk. Not that he's a multi-personality, but he's saying, who will go for us? And Yahushua, and Yeshayahu says, here I am. I will go. And I remember those words because I said, I said the same thing in my heart to him. And I just, you know, want to obey his, his, his covenant. But more than that, the people that are lost, that will never, ever hear the truth because they're taught by people that are seminary trained, circus people. And, you know, they have a, a hard and fast, rigid denominationalism. And you're, they're never even, they hardly ever hear the word Israel. Or Yisrael, and when they do, they think about the state, the government that's in the land now, and that's just a government. You know, the Israel are those who are engrafted into the covenant, and they obey His commandments. You know, and the scattered tribes are now hearing that. You know, because we are His scattered tribes. Well, Yehusha said he he didn't come for those who don't need a doctor. He came for those who are sick. And there's a scripture somewhere that says, uh, "I will use the." the base things of the earth to, to confound the wise, something like yeah. that, isn't it? Yeah, and he also said in, in a similar way that he would set, he sent his servants out to go gather for the wedding feast, to prepare for the wedding feast. They, the, the ones that were uh, friends and close relatives wouldn't come. So let's, well, and of course, he's talking about a few of them, not all of them, but, you know, let, let's fill this house. So he says, go out there and get some of these people that don't know anything about this. They're not even people that we know. Let's get them in here. Well, of course, they were transformed on the way. But these are people who he's gathering. He's gathering the people who were not going to be making it at all. But the, he's opening the way. And now, go out into the highways and byways. Search for people under the rocks. Dig them out of the hills. Pull them out of the hiding places that they've gone into mm -hmm. and bring them into this wedding feast. That's what he's talking about, mm -hmm. you know, so that my house might be filled. Mm -hmm. And there was one man in that example that was not wearing the wedding garments. 
you know, meaning the righteousness. He was not willing to be converted. He was go walking in his own paths. And, you know, that's what that means. It, it wasn't just that he was not wearing the wedding garments. Of course, wedding garments were given to each guest. But this guy didn't want to put them on. I don't want to act like that. I keep Sunday. And I like my bunny rabbits. And I really like that tree and all those ornaments. Well, that fellow is going to be thrown out. Hey, we don't have any Christmas trees in here. You know, we don't go for that stuff. I do yeah. the tour. I do the tour on my way. You can't tell me I, what to do. I know what the Torah says. <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't change. It, it's not waffling around, and he's not saying, "Well, I like this at one time, and now I don't like that anymore. I like something else." What are you doing over there? Yeah, I like that. Oh boy, you can't adopt pagan ways and then come into his wedding feast. You know, the wedding feast is something for his bride. And who's his bride? Yeah. Israel. Israel. There is no other bride. And uh, it all happens when you come out of the water, doesn't it? When it's his real spirit, you just, you sort of feel it. You, it's like he gives you back a, a conscience. It's like over the years you you sort of see so much sinfulness in the world, and you're probably partaking yeah. of it too, that you sort of get a bit dull. And so when his spirit comes in you after, of course, the first you're still high and then you're great. After a little while, you sort of, what's this pain? Why am I feeling this pain? I didn't do anything wrong. And you you might blame your wife or your husband or someone around you. What did you say that to me for? And you realize after a while that it's nobody around you that's causing this pain. Even if you just start judging somebody, like which is perfectly acceptable in the world, you, you start realizing... He's in you, and he's not liking something you're doing. Some, either you, something you do, something you think, something you, you're supposed to arrest every single thought. That's whew, every thought. That's a lot of thoughts. You know, speaking of thoughts, right. that's a, uh, that's why we try to stay in constant prayer. And being in constant prayer, we're wearing mm. the armor of Elohim, because he's protecting mm. us at all times. When we're in prayer to Yahusha inside of us. He is actually not going to be approachable by any demonic activity. I mean, the demons, if they, if they know that he's, if we're speaking with him, or we're listening to him, and sometimes I just like to be silent before him, because that's really powerful. But uh, we have to acknowledge that we have inherited lies from our fathers. See, in Yahu or Jeremiah 16, 19, it says, we, in the last days, in the latter days, that the Gentiles will, will come and say, we've inherited nothing but lies. And he's not talking about something that was going on just then. He's talking about the latter days. And we are in those latter days. So what are those lies? Would the lies be obeying the commandments? I don't think so. You know? You can't possibly go wrong with that, especially when you picture yourself in the future and you're raised from the dead and you're standing before Yahushua's throne and somebody is saying, like I was saying before, they're accusing you of keeping his commandments. Somebody's saying he kept the commandments or he or she kept the commandments and also taught them to other people. Well, that's great. That's not a bad thing. Your pastor might say, "Oh, that's legalism." You might be, uh, you might be cast into the lake of fire if you try to keep the real Sabbath. How about that? You know, I mean, that's just wrong. You know, and you know, even the, his disciples said to the Sanhedrin that it's better that we obey Elohim rather than men. Because if men, see, you're not obeying, you're not obeying me and Mark. You're obeying, <clears throat> obeying the word as it's written, you know. It's still mm. Sabbath here, and they're calm. We don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it brings forth. This is, this is slightly off topic, but what, uh, for people who go through this step. Oh, wait. Ah. For people, for people who go through this step and uh, they find themselves in the middle of a congregation, somehow they've discovered this and they've cried out, pierced to the heart, immersed and uh, full of his spirit. Um, do, you, do you recommend them walk away or do you recommend them stay 
incognito and just like a like a mole, like a uh, what would you say, like a just infiltrating slowly into the thing. And cause it's very hard to do that when you're first filled because you just want to tell You know, I, I analyzed that on several levels too. And when I first came into the belief and I was immersed and I realized where I was working, I did not like it. I thought, I've got to run away. But then the spirit in me said, wait a minute, let me show you this scripture. And then I was reading some of Shaul or Paul's writings and Paul was explaining that, you know, you, you infiltrate. You become like them. You look like you're one of them, but you don't act like them. You, you obey the covenant, but you're in all around them. That's what Yahushua did. See, he was around all the sinners because they were the ones that needed the physician. And the physician in me is reaching people, even in a dark place. But you see, all places are dark wherever you go. And that's what I realized, too, because if I walked from one building into another building, the same dead people are in there. And then go down the street, keep moving, go block after block into one building and look around and go, they're lost. Everybody is in serious trouble without people, soldiers, that are out here in the battlefield. Mm. If you're not in the harvest, working in the dirt, then you're not going to be planting any seed. And if you don't plant any seed, there won't be a harvest of righteousness. Mm. So you've got to work with, un you've got to work with people who are fallen, in order for there to be seed planted. And so uh, I work with them, you know. Some people, I, I mean, I even work with witches, sorcerers, uh, you know. Uh, it, 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 but then again, if you're, if you're a false teacher, if you're teaching a Christian denomination to not keep the Sabbath, for example, that's a warlock. You know, that's a person who is actually teaching, that's masquerading as a messenger of light, but is actually teaching and sowing error. So if you go into a steeple, and you say, well, wait a minute, what's that steeple? <laughs> and then the pastor goes, well, they wouldn't understand this was a circus if there wasn't a steeple here. I've heard that. Only they use the word CH for CH, which is the same thing. But um, there's not any steeples in the, in the walk, you know. There's no pumpkins and there's no trees, you know. The only tree that is actually being used in our walk is the one that Yahushua was nailed to. That's the only tree we use, or we had to use. Mm. But um, yeah, th there's there's lost people everywhere. Now we were we were you were asking me, basically in a nutshell, how would you phrase that in a more simple way? Well, we get a lot of believers who email and they're young people, and they find out this, and they find themselves in the middle of a circus, C H U R C H, an assembly. And they want to tell everybody and, we're, and just tell them all they're wrong. And we're sort of saying, yeah, oh, just, just calm down. And it's great that you feel like that. But you've got to get trained and sort of strong in the word before you can handle what, what, what stuff's going to come at you. Yeah. Um, and they, then the other alternative is to run out. <laughs> and so we're sort of saying, well, it's hard to, to, to tell people what to do because it's very yeah. unique. Well, Everybody's unique. One on uh, one is what it is. It's not you can't just say, "Hey, you listen to me." But you can say, "Well, you could bring up one fact that's a scriptural foundation, and then just put that out there, and then see how it's received." But then the thing of it is, let's say uh, you look back in time and you think of Paul. You know, Paul was a well-trained Pharisee. And he even claimed to be a Pharisee of Pharisees. And that was after his conversion. Well, anyway, uh, he didn't leave, but his work was among them, you know. But he also went out to the Gentiles. That was his primary work. Because that was always Israel's primary work, is to go teach the nations. That's our commission. We're, and if these people are still outside the covenant, then they are our mission field. We don't run away from one group to go to another group that's just in, in, in as bad a shape, you know. So wherever we're planted, that where, is where we're to remain. That's why I'm still in that shop. And plus, because I have legal obligations that I'm tied there too. I have to be there for those legal obligations as well. But spiritually, as Yahushua works through me, there is a need for me to be among the lost. Because that's, where we're, that's what we're all called to do. And uh, I happen to be in a different group of lost people than you might be. You know, uh, our families, they might seem to be 
you know, good people in general, but they're outside the covenant. You know, they don't call on the name. They don't care about what day of the week it is when they work or they follow the dragon's teachings. You know, the, the dragon's religion is very clean and bright looking. It looks very uh, friendly and happy. But it's actually corrupt. It's a corrupt. It's a corrupt form of Yahusha's instructions. Because see, he seeks to be like Yahuwah, and he's adopted almost everything. He's an imitator, an identity thief. So you need to hear the true name and either accept it or reject it. And you have to hear the true commandments and either accept it or reject it. And if you want to pick and choose which commandments you want to obey, then read the book of James and say, and if you come away from reading the book of James and you say, well, uh, I better obey all of them because if I'm caught with just breaking one of these commandments, it's death. Mm -hmm. Every one of them carries the death penalty, you know, mm -hmm. and I know which ones I'm weakest in and other people are weaker in others. You know, and, and we have to work our way through this and get to where we can actually find a way for uh, our, to overcome ourselves, you know, and uh, overcome the world. But Yahushua says, I have overcome the world. And if he's in us, then we can do anything because he does it through us. You know, because it's not us who live. It's him who lives in us. You know, that li that that's where our life is. Our life is not in our in ourselves. Our life is only in Him. You know. Religion has really uh, warped the true path and made mankind have a, a preconceived idea about, and those who aren't in religion have a preconceived idea about what the walk is. My apprentice last week, she said to me, are there things you miss, Mark? I said, what do you mean? She said, well, things that you're not allowed to do, like things that you miss. I said, no. She said, yeah, but really, are there things that you wish you could do, that you used to do? I said, I was nuts, you know. I said, and as far as things I can't do, I said, if I want to have a drink, I can have a drink. If I, you know, if I want to see a movie, I can see a movie. You know, I said, you kind of change a bit anyway. I know I've got heaps of kids now. I said, I don't want to go out partying all night anyway. You know, I don't want to do things like that. Like, it's, I get too tired. <laughs> so it's, you know, you kind of change it anyway. But aside from that, it's not it's not legalism in the sense that you can't do anything. You can, you just don't do what Torah says not to do. Anything else, I kind of see, well, just moderation, did, you know. it's. Uh, did you feel like uh, that uh, person that asked you that, might have been the snake in the tree. Yeah, a little bit, because I've been speaking to her for a while about these things, and she sort of hasn't accepted it, and so I've stopped. Well, maybe she was asking uh, you that saying, in, in terms of asking yourself that. If I did this, if I went your walk, if I had the Torah, and Yahuwah was my, was my king, and I was his servant, would I miss something myself? You know, And I quickly answered, I said, I am so relieved when you asked that question, uh, I was personally answering in my own heart that I was relieved to not be that same person. And I, and besides, you're not the same person, so why would you miss something that you're a, a dead person had? Yeah, that's really it. Yeah. All I said to her was at the end, I said, actually, the one thing we do miss each year, only because we see how happy our families are and how angry we are, I said, every Christmas... I hate Christmas. I hate everything about it because I know what it means. But I get you get that little feeling in you like, remember the love we used to have with our family? That's the yeah, only absolutely. thing that you often... And it's not the, anything... It's not the, the Christmas, Christmas that you miss. It's the love that... And that's what you, you in previous seminars we talked about is where... What is it that makes this thing so important to people? And it's the family bond that, and the love mm -hmm. and the people that are around you that you feel. And that's what you miss. And that bonding now, like Yahushua said, I will give you a new mother and a new father and a, and a new brother and a new sister. And those are the other Nazarene. You know, and you're closer now than you ever were to your brothers and your fathers and your mothers. Yes. Yes.
Yeah, yeah. because you'd die for another not sorry. Uh, another, you know, you well, you'd die for your family, and they are they, and you yeah. you will be, receive a new family. But you want you yearn so much, like you said in your song, you you yearn so much to hear Yahusha's name on their lips, you know, calling out for forgiveness, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Wow, that would be so awesome. Yeah. So immersion, immersion is the yeah. doorway. The doorway we we talked about repentance, being convicted. Being convicted of your lawlessness, believing that Yahusha is there, that he created you because he wants to know you and work through you. You repent of your lawlessness, you turn away, and you sign of a good pledge, good conscience, you get immersed in water. And that's the beginning. You'll never nope. look back. <laughs> you know. So <laughs> I guess we covered the, uh, the bulk of it there, you know. If both of us are speechless, that's probably a sign that this is the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I'm really anxious to see how yeah. this turns out. Yeah. I want. I mean, in terms of not just the way it looks, but in terms of the people who might respond and and be immersed, that we may yeah. never meet yeah. in the flesh, that we'll meet in the in the kingdom. Yes. Yeah. In, in the world to come, and to say, well, you know, I watched that video about Mark and Lou, and uh, I went ahead and immersed, and boy, I was changed. You know, <laughs> you may you may as well give yourself up, you know, because there's no hope. If you sow anything to the flesh, it's just death. You know, sow to the spirit, and you'll have er everlasting life. You know, so. Our sisters up in far north Queensland, Antonia and Beryl, we uh, want to encourage you. We love you. Keep searching through fossilized customs. Keep keep looking for Yahusha. And uh, we really encourage you to go into the waters of immersion because you will never look back. It will change you. Everything that's happened in your whole life will just have perspective of what he's been saying to you. Because Antonia was the original pool lady and she's the one who said everything in life happens for a reason well you should read read the scriptures get a hold of the Besorah of Yahusha or the scriptures and that's where the living words actually are you know in your translation as in English and I'm sorry about my accent <laughs> yeah did you see the thing I sent you last night about the uh the Australian accents and the slang. Oh, I saw that movie, that little thing you sent. Yes, I saw that. Phyllis yeah. and I were really having a fun time with that. We didn't, even, we didn't understand yeah. even half of it. No. <laughs> it was hilarious. Well, that's wonderful, brother. We love you, okay. brothers and sisters. Thank you, for tuning, thank you for tuning in to Torah Talk. I think this was number 24. So... Yeah, and uh, the repent that we did last week and immersion will be put on a DVD. Okay. I want to uh, just, uh, grab something and show you real quick, Mark. You don't have to put it on, but yeah. I just want to show you what I found. I found this at the shop. Yeah. Uh, now, this is a shofar. You know, it's a shofar. You know, this is Adam. Wait, just let me get in focus. focus. That's this it. is Adam's shofar. Ooh, that's a serious. Uh, yeah, it is. There. And now uh, that's, oh, I don't know what it is, uh, what kind of an animal it is. And this is the sword. This is uh, the translation called the Besora of Yahusha. And uh, we distribute that at Torazone.net. And this is a, this has horns too. But I put it on for you. <laughs> Found this at that shop, <laughs> and, and it really goes well with the uh, the whole Viking beard thing. <laughs> Is that nuts? That's how does wonderful. it go with the water? <clears throat> oh, you, now, yeah, amazing! I pick this up, and I <laughs> I see some kind of a, an enemy ship off in the distance. Wait, 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 wait. Can you move over to the right? Uh, can you move over to your right a little bit? Because like this? You're, uh, 
No, the other way. The other way. <laughs> other side. This? How, how's this? Yeah, put that on the other side. On the other side? Yeah. That's wonderful. It's it's too much all to take in all at once. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Oh, okay then. I just wanted you to see it because anyway, that shop has these. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I love it. Yeah. Where did anyway, he, uh, where did he find those? Oh, these are just fake horns. They're not real, you know. But that's a serious metal helmet, though. And it's got a nice padding, you know. If I only had this when I played football. <laughs> uh, sh shoulder pads and all that. Yeah. Who, Who would buy one of those? Do you sell sort of costumes and things, do you? No, not so much. But we have uh, a lot of uh, swords and Romans, Roman things. We have tridents. And uh, Bob buys a lot of weaponry. Um <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, I was looking through one of the catalogs while he had it out, and uh, you know they had those helmets. They have uh, Roman helmets, and you know that we buy and whatever. Yeah. No, by the way, uh, objects don't have sin in them. Uh, it's people's hearts that have sin. So don't be afraid of the horn, you know, or those helmets, in case somebody thinks that sin is in an object. Uh, it, sin is a I mean, evil is in the hearts of people. You know, I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. So, I don't know if you have time to put that on there or not, but it might get me a lot of trouble. So. Oh, well, it's up to you, brother. I can put everything it's on. Matter. It's fine. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Yeah. It's fine. But it's a warning. The shofar is a warning horn that was used to gather Israel. And if you all... Uh, Read about the shofar in the in the in the Besorah. You know, you should have a copy of it. You know, it's it's a wonderful book. It's got uh, everything. It's got well Genesis through Revelation. Mm -hmm. You know. So yeah. are we all finished for now then? Yeah, I don't even want to hang up. I'm having such a good time. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. It's uh, people need to 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 let go and break down those uh, behavioral things, don't they? So they can just love one another. Yeah, they need to pretty much get over them, themselves and yeah. stop ju judging one another, that's yeah. for sure. And uh, and keep your eyes on Yahusha so yeah. that you don't sink into the water, you know I mean? Well, I mean, you are, you want to sink into the water, that's what we're doing. But I'm talking about when Peter or Kepha went out outside the boat yeah. and he took his mind, he took his eyes off of Yahusha and he looked at the wind and the, and the storm and the waves. And that's when, you know, that's persecution is what that is. And when you get distracted, you will get off track, you know, and that's what the adversary just loves. If, if he can persecute you and make you look away from Yahushua and go, oh, <laughs> then that's when he can get, that's what his way, you know. You don't want to do things his way, you know. Mm. Just mm. rejoice in the persecution. Yes. Wonderful. And be joyful. Well, I'll, I guess we're uh, finished yes. for today. Yes. You All enjoy right. the rest of your Sabbath, mate. Oh, I will. Thank you. And yeah. We'll see you. Yeah. Phyllis and, uh, and Amy will be on next week. Yes. yes. Okay. Wonderful. Well, we love you. And we might have Jason on, on, and on, our, on our show next time. I think he's coming down to visit his father, so I thought I might rope oh. him in here. And right. uh, we might have the three of us. Okay. Uh, uh, two weeks from now. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Okay. We love you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for tuning in. And if we'll you see you then. And if you haven't been immersed, we encourage you to go there. Love you, Absolutely. mate. Absolutely. <laughs> love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.